Good evening to another edition of Our Lady Live. Tonight, the tables are turned slightly. There's going to be an interview, but the interview is going to be of me, and it's going to be conducted by Miss Russell. So, Miss Russell, thank you uh, for agreeing to interview me. Well, thank you. So, I got all my list of questions from the students. Are you prepared? I'm ready. I'm ready. I didn't. I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. Um, well, thanks for having me again, and thanks for, um, for doing an interview, because I'm sure that everyone would like to know a little bit more about you. Um, you can decline to answer any of my questions if you like. And, good to know. Uh, <laughs> right? <laughs> I, guess, um, I guess it would be a good place to start to just ask about um, your background, and kind of, I know we all know you came to us from Providence, but yeah. um, what, um, what did you do before that? Okay, yeah, I, uh, I, I grew up in the area. Um, I, I grew up in Clarksville till, oh gosh, probably seventh grade, and we moved to New Albany, so not quite a big move, but it's always been this area. I was a public school kid through fifth grade. I went to uh, what was then called Green Acres Elementary in Clarksville. Now it's just Clarksville Elementary, I think. And it's a funny story, I, my parents wanted me to go to St. Anthony starting in sixth grade just down the street um, from Clarksville, from Green Acres. And I didn't want to go. Um, I knew people there. In fact, one of my best friends that I played baseball with went there. Um, but the last thing we did as fifth graders was take a tour of Clarksville Middle School. And I was convinced that I should go to Clarksville Middle School because you could get pizza every day for lunch. So that's, that's what I didn't want to give up. Um, but... <laughs> My parents were strong-willed enough that they weren't going to let a 12-year-old make that decision. So uh, ended up going to St. Anthony's. It's probably the best decision they, they made for me academically. Um, I, I was a bit of a fish out of water there. Um, we were not, I guess you could say, uh, very active churchgoers. Um, I'd been baptized, but that was really about it. I had not had my first communion, so... At that time, they gave me kind of everything at once. I got uh, my first reconciliation. I got my first communion. They did confirmation. I'm doing all these things within like 18 months. Um, but I do remember that first six months of school, so school masses where I did not know why people were saying the things they were saying, why they were standing up, why they were kneeling. I mean, it, it was very awkward for a long time um, until I got that down. But you learn quickly. Um, so from there, went on to Providence. Um, had a great experience there. Lots of good friends still, um, played baseball mostly went to college. I went to Hanover for a year, uh, played baseball for a year at Hanover. Then I transferred to Bellarmine and, um, always had in the back of my mind thinking about teaching, but was also not really sure. And some people kind of gave, me the same reasons they give other people oh, you're not going to make any money you know it's, it's just you need to do something more than that so it was not until my junior year that i decided that's truly what i wanted to do but i was a little far down the road already in my coursework i was a communications major so i ended up finishing that and um went back to school to get my uh master's in teaching so did a few jobs in between i worked as a underwriter for a mortgage company which i had no training for whatsoever. <laughs> they trained me and uh, that's what I did during the days. And then I went to class at night and um, that was, that was it. So I got very lucky in this. I was supposed to do student teaching in Jefferson County. Um, and it was mid December and I got a call from Gary Gerber at Providence wanting to know um, if I could do my student teaching at Providence. And they had a teacher leave unexpectedly at semester. And I had no idea. I didn't think I could. Um, and for those of you that don't know a lot about student teaching, you, you, you don't get paid for it. Um, but Providence was willing to pay me, which was fantastic because they were trying to hire a teacher. But the question was out there whether or not it could count as my student teaching. So I called my advisor at Bellarmine and he said, well, I can't stop you from taking a job. Um, he said, but you know, your uh, teacher that you were supposed to work for in JCPS is probably not going to be very happy with you. And uh, he was correct. She was not very happy, um, but got the job, filled in for a semester, and it turned into 10 plus years uh, of being there as a teacher, then as the social studies department head, then as an assistant principal, and 
so that's that's how it worked out. Wow! So you've been in the same place then. It's I mean, pretty much, yeah. I was I was only in Providence prior to coming to Our Lady. Awesome. Well, that's really awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, you answered my next question, which which is where your um, family's from. So you're from yeah. from Clarksville. Yep. Um, what uh, a normal day, like a normal like pre pre Q day. What would that What would that have looked like? At school. Yeah. Okay. Um, it really depends on the day, but I much prefer. There are certain things like in the mornings that you've got to come in. So I will come in and the first person I always see every morning is Connie Andrus. And we sit and we kind of talk about anything that we need to do that day. She needs to kind of have an idea of what my day is like, how many meetings I might have, if I'm going to go see a teacher, if I'm going to be off campus. God bless Connie because she keeps everything the way it should be and knows everything that's happening. Um, at that point, um, you probably can find me either in the gym or out at drop off. Um, some mornings I'm out doing drop off duty, either talking to Bob or anybody else who happens to be out there. Um, it's, it's, I try not to be in my office more than I have to be. There are some things where, again, whether it's meetings or paperwork, I can get done that, that some days I just find it hard to get out of there, but I don't want to be. Um, I've got lunch duty twice a week. So that keeps me, as you know, you've done lunch duty. Um, <laughs> get to see them in their natural state in the lunchroom. Um, but I try to get outside. The kids are taking recess, just kind of see them, walk around the hallway, see what's going on in the classroom and check in with teachers. Um, let them know how they're doing. I always appreciated that as a teacher, just to have someone stick their head in to say, hey, how's it going? Need anything? Most times they don't. Most times they're fine, and they're probably like, what are you doing? Get out of here. But um, I think it's nice to kind of walk in and just make yourself visible, not only to the teachers, but the students as well. Right. That's right. And I, and I agree. You were very visible in our building, and that's, a, that's a really – we really appreciate that. Yeah. I really appreciate that. So then push past that then, and so what does it look it's like now? Oh, it's, I don't even know if I can describe it because here, my main function is to oversee what we've got, including assistants and staff members and teachers, 50 or so employees who I now never see, um, <laughs> 372 students who I never see, except for the two of my own. Um, so, you know, it, my mornings could be helping out with kindergarten e-learning. Uh, my wife is a teacher. She has stuff going every single day where she's trying to teach her students. So it's a bit of a juggling act, as you are probably familiar with, in her getting her stuff done. Um, my fifth grader, for the most part, can work independently. Um, but kindergarten, you know, once we introduce it and tell him what he's doing, he can, he can get a hang of it. But you got to watch him a little bit more closely because he's, he's sure. six. Uh, in between that, I'm getting texts from teachers. I'm checking emails. I'm talking to Connie, um, talking with Ricky McGuire in the business and parish office. We're trying in the middle of a budget right now. Everything was all set to go. Then this happened, and we've had to make some adjustments, and we're trying to see when that will get approved because once we approve the budget, tuition gets set, and that sets a whole other cycle of things going on. So I'm still trying to be, I guess, as I would in the building – accessible if not visible yeah. to staff and, and families as well just in a different way right thank you um so you recently did a marathon kind of 24 hour marathon yeah can you tell us where you got that idea from uh it just kind of popped in my head one day as i was running i was i run a few times a week i've not run since but i'm feeling okay i feel like i could do it today but it's kind of rainy um i was coming up on i usually run about three to three and a half miles and i was just in my head thinking how long would it take me to run a marathon and then for whatever reason uh, i started thinking about well that's about 23 miles away 23 hours and it just kind of spun into i've been thinking of ways to trying to promote our scholarship program and really that's where it came from so uh, i kind of had the idea i uh called Ricky McGuire in the parish office to kind of talk about the parameters of what the fundraiser might look like. And just like, is this a dumb idea? Uh, I talked to father Joe. 
Um, he agreed that it was a dumb idea and it was stupid and crazy, but he said, hey, go for it. Um, so I thought, why not? Let's give it a shot. I thought I could do it. I committed to it. I felt pretty strongly about it. And then every day we got closer. I was like, what if I can't do this? <laughs> what if I can't make it? Um, but no, it, it turned out so well. Um, just the best part about it is people came up just during the day. I had three guys sitting with me. Mr. McGuire was one of them and a couple of buddies from Providence who sat with me all night from midnight to about 8 a.m., and then students and families and you guys came up. It was just really, really cool. Um, and by last count, we had uh, $8,100 in the account. So that's going to help so many people. So I'd do it again. And at this rate, I'll probably have to do it again next year since this one was so successful this year. Right. Yes. Yeah. No, no, don't do it again next year. You're crazy. Uh, maybe I'll come up with something else. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Oh, my goodness. So that's awesome. Um, I can't see my notes. Sorry. I'm very it's okay. Right here. <laughs> okay. Um, what do you think you like the best about being a principal versus like being a high school teacher? Uh, what do I like the best? I, it gives me, I'm going to try to sound, it's, it's not the being in charge part. That is, that is the least appealing to me um, because that's, that's what takes all the time. Um, yeah, it's, I, so let, I'll, I'll answer that by giving you some background. So initially, the idea behind getting my principal's license is, was strictly a financial thing to begin with. So teachers in Indiana, you get, it's on a scale. So you have your bachelor's degree, you have your master's degree, then there's a category called master's plus 30, which is the highest you can be. And when I took the job at Providence, one of my duties was teaching economics and I did not have much economics coursework. So I had to go back to school and had to take 12 hours of econ at IUS. Uh, did a lot of this in the summer, did a lot of it in an evening class. So I was looking at ways, what could I do to pick up 18 more hours to kind of give me that master's plus 30. And I thought about just taking some random classes, but then that didn't make a whole lot of sense. So I started looking into, if I'm going to do this, why don't I get it in something that will count in case I want to explore administration or something like that. So I looked at several programs and a lot of the principal licensing programs were 18 hours. So 18 plus 12, there's my 30. So that's what I decided to do. Um, when I got into it, it was, what appealed to me was the benefit and the, I guess the impact you could have beyond just your class. Um, I to this day still miss teaching. One of the coolest things last year was when, not that Mr. H had to be out with his hip issue, but I was able to take his eighth grade class for about six weeks. And that was a whole lot of fun. Um, I do miss being in the classroom, but in many ways, all those kids now are in my classroom. Um, so that's, that is what appealed to me to try. And it's not just me. I walked into an excellent situation at our lady. Um, the more I learned about it and the quality of the people that we have in place, it was a very easy decision for me to leave a place where I was very happy. Um, I was not looking to take just any position, but it was when it came down to it that I wanted to take this leap. I don't think I could have walked into a better, a better school with a better supporting group of people than what we've got. Um, so that was it. What, what impact, how can I work with staff, work with teachers uh, to make the experience, the whole experience, not just the academic side, but the social side, um, the theological side, all of that make it a better experience for kids. That's what appealed to me to, kind of, to be in charge of kind of directing that path a little bit. Sure. You're doing yeah. a great job. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, <clears throat> okay. So... Yeah. Um, okay, this I'm gonna flip down and then I'm gonna come back. So, okay. so super personal. You ready? Yeah. What is your greatest, like, if you had to think about like a life lesson that you've learned that has come to you that would be like the most poignant or the one that has probably had the most impact on you, what might that be? Okay. Um, for those that don't know, when I, so I started at Providence in January of 2007. And I just, I just, I worked that second semester. Um, 
Then I got the full-time jobs. My first full year was 07, 08. So I had one year full teaching in, and then the September of 2008, I got sick. Um, felt fine, had no symptoms. Wake up one night, my back starts hurting. To make a really long story short, um, I had a tumor in my abdomen. It was cancerous. Took it out, uh, went through chemo for four months, had another surgery, and I don't want to over-exaggerate it because it was scary, um, but about a month in, um, it, it took about a month for the doctors to tell me that I was more than likely going to be okay, um, but I was going to go through a lot to get to the point where I was okay, and that was the surgeries, and that was the chemo and everything, so I say it all the time, I don't, I don't think I would say I'm happy it happened to me. Um, but I do appreciate the perspective that it's given me. So when problems arise, um, everybody faces problems. Everybody faces difficulties in life. That happened to be mine. And the way I've chose to deal with it since is I try not to get too worked up over problems that come after that. Because again, it could be worse. I, I could not be here. And I don't say that to be overdramatic, but you know, on a scale of, of, of being diagnosed with cancer at 27 with a six month old child and not knowing what's going to happen versus, well, we got to figure out how to make lunch five minutes longer. I mean, come on, we can figure that out. Um, so that's the perspective that it's given me um, since then. Again, I don't think I'd sign up for it again, but I do appreciate how it's allowed me to change my outlook on life and the, and the problems that we face. Right. Okay. Yeah. And the kids often ask questions like that in middle school, you know, mm -hmm. they get, they don't understand how can this be God's will and kind of expressing or trying to explain that how, what, what we're allowed to learn from those things and what we can bring away from it. So, yeah. And it's going through it. It's hard. I mean, I, I still remember being in the hospital um, and the chaplain of Providence at the time, father Mike Hildebrand um, coming in and wanting to pray. And I didn't want to pray. I think I told him that. Now I can blame some of that on the medicine that I was on at the time, but I was like, no, why, why would I want to do that? Look at, you know, so it, it takes a while sometimes to get that perspective um, because in the moment it can be hard to, hard to see it. I'm, I'm jealous of the people who in the midst of all that just recognize it immediately because that, that was not me. <laughs> right. Right. But yeah. it does, it does take a bit. I think a bit, you're right though. I mean, after the fact and being able to be able to appreciate that is a, yes, yeah. I love that. Okay. So yes. your family, you guys are all quarantined at your house. Yes. Yeah. Um, Corinne's parents live next door. Um, so we have lots of yard conversations with them. Um, too bad we can't send the boys over there. It'd be a lot easier <laughs> quarantine times. Um, but my parents, uh, they drive by and hang out just in the parking lot from time to time. Boys have been by to see their grandparents. We're doing what we can in a, in a safe way. Um, they're getting tired of it. Everybody's getting tired of it. But, um, you know, we don't go many places. Um, I run back and forth to school every now and then to grab some stuff um, or to the grocery store. And that's, that's about it. So while you've been there, though, what are some things that you guys have appreciated since we've been out? Um, it's nice to have more time with the kids. Um, and I do, ironically enough, I mean, saying this is the principle maybe I should have known this before, but I do have a better handle on what they're doing and what they're learning because I'm seeing more of it. Um, I try not to, you know, you know what it's like being a parent when a kid in the building. Um, I try to let them be, let them be their own as best I can. So um, if I stick my head in fifth grade, I try to be very quick about it. Um, if I stick my head in kindergarten, I try to be very quick about it. Um, so it has been nice to see, kind of what they're learning and, and the stuff they're picking up on. Um, I've been very impressed with what the staff, at least, I, again, I see most of what kindergarten and fifth grade are doing, what they've been able to do. Um, but just spending more time with them. Now, don't get me wrong. They, they either go from loving each other and wrestling on the floor and laughing to wanting to kill each other. Um, <laughs> and, you know, so it just depends on the moment. Um, so it's not been all smooth, but the time is nice. The time is nice, even if it's a little bit stressful trying to run a school and communicate with you guys from, from my dining room table. It's, that's hard. Yeah. yeah, it really is. It really is. Okay. 
I think yeah. we need some time, so I'm gonna give you some lightning questions. All right, hit me with them. Ready? I'm ready. All right, so some of these we've already heard. Favorite okay. holiday? Favorite holiday? Uh, I'm gonna say the 4th of July, but mainly because it's also my birthday. Well, there you go. So birthdays, birthdays are great. Yeah. Dark chocolate or milk chocolate? Uh, milk chocolate all day, every day. Milk chocolate, all right. Um, basketball or football? Uh, basketball. Never played we football. All know you love baseball. I love baseball. I, never play, I, don't, I like watching football, but I, I never played football. Right. Good. Yeah. Right. Black coffee or all fruit fruit up? Uh, I've got to have something in it. I, I, I don't like black coffee. Right. Yeah. All right. Uh, favorite junk food? Favorite junk food would probably be uh, potato chips. Yes. You're a carb guy. All right. Yeah. Um, favorite place you've traveled? Um, my wife and I, the year, uh, was it year? the year after we got married, we took a trip, uh, to Europe the year before, about a year and a half before we had kids. Cause we knew if we didn't do it then we probably wouldn't get to do it. Um, so we went to, uh, London, we went to Barcelona and went to Venice. Um, wow. so I'm going to cheat and just say that as one, because it's hard to, uh, separate which, which place I like the best. Yeah, that would be hard. All right, so city or country? City. Yes. Yeah. Um, color of your eyes? Blue. Favorite college team? Indiana. Sorry. Okay. No, it's teasing. <laughs> um, texting or talking? Uh, do more texting than talking. Although once, since quarantine's been out, I've done more talking, but a lot of time it's, it's usually texting. Yes. Um, yeah. Cake or pie? Cake. Last time you were up past 4 a.m.? Last Thursday, not, well, last Thursday into Friday morning. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, let's see. Did you ever have a nickname? Uh, yeah, my nickname growing up uh, and through high school was Bruno. And the only real reason behind this is it's been explained to me is my mom and dad had one of those baby name books and they just opened it up and put their finger on it and that's where it was. So. That became my nickname, I think, before I was even out of the womb. Right? That is yeah. funny. Yeah. Scale of 1 to 10, how good are you at keeping secrets? Uh, I, my wife's giving me like a stink eye right now. I, I'm awful at keeping things like surprises. Like if I have something, I, I want to tell people. Like I don't want to wait. Right. But if it was a secret, like someone can't know, I can do that. But if it's like something cool that's going to happen, I really struggle with not telling that person. Right. Yeah. Okay. I got you. All right. Um, I think that was all the questions that I had. Is there anything you want to share with our school and school family that wasn't asked of you? Just, you know, I appreciate everybody's patience, um, their flexibility during this time. I know this is not what anybody's nobody anybody's asked for and as we were discussing earlier there's no plan here there's no blueprint for it so i know a lot of it has kind of changed on the fly but parents are being expected to do much more than they expected to do um teachers are being asked to do much more than they expected to do i don't think there's anybody who wouldn't come back into school tomorrow morning if we had the choice <laughs> right. because right. yeah i mean it's been it's been a little crazy um but the support uh, and just the, the, the flexibility everybody's had considering the situation everybody's facing, uh, I'm very, very, very grateful for. So that's what I'd like people to know. Well, great. Thank you. You're doing a great job. We appreciate you and all you're doing. Well, thank you, Ms. Russell. And I appreciate everybody who watches this interview. All right. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.